In this lecture, we're going to talk about how to visualize numbers on a number line, understanding and having a solid foundation in how to plot numbers on a number line will allow you eventually to be more proficient when we do rectangular coordinate systems, also solving equations and inequalities. So let's start with plotting a line. And we pick a point on the line as our reference point. So here I have picked a 0 as my reference point. It does not have to be 0. It can be any number. And then based on that point, once you plot a second point, that determines your scale. So in this particular case, we are using increment of 1 as our scale. And that will dictate uh, how you plot the rest of the numbers. The convention is that all the numbers to the right of 0 are positive, and all the numbers to the left of 0 are negative. So let's plot some more points. If you keep going in increments of 1 to the right, you just keep going up by 1. If you keep going to the left by increments of 1, then you're going to have smaller and smaller numbers, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Once you place your numbers on a number line, it's also easier to then see the hierarchy of numbers. For example, here negative 3 is smaller than negative 2. Negative 2 is smaller than negative 1. So negative 3 is smaller than negative 1. So you can see how ordering of numbers become easy uh, just by looking at number line. So always remember that numbers to the left are smaller than numbers to the right. Numbers on the right are bigger than numbers on the left. All right, so suppose I mark this coordinate as 0 and the next one as 5,000. Once you have an increment of 5,000, that means you're counting everything in 5,000s. So the increment doesn't always have to be uh, 1, or it doesn't have to be in uh, groups of tens or hundreds either. You can also have fractional increments which we'll see in a little bit. So if I go in thousands, 5,000 increments, then that's how my number line would look. All right, let's take a look at what if my uh, reference point is negative 2,001. And the next segment, I next tick mark I plot is 10,000. Then I'm choosing an increment of 12,001, and I will have to go accordingly uh, left and right. So see if you can plot a tick mark to the left of negative 2001. You also don't have to have a number line always horizontal. You could have a vertical number line and plot numbers there. In fact, we see vertical number lines in real life lots of places, like in measuring cups, thermometers. We use horizontal and vertical uh, number lines together, so two number lines perpendicular to each other to uh, plot points in our rectangular coordinate system. All right, so convention is that you have, if you mark a 0, then to the left is negative, to the right is positive. Also, look at the number of tick marks that are uh, shown over here. That decides, that can also dictate how your scale is going to be. So for example, if I label this tick mark as 0, then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 equal spaces between 0 and the next uh, darkened tick mark. So that means that I'm going to be able to plot decimal numbers on here. So for example, I can make the left hand tick mark negative 1, right hand 1. I can also do point 1 and negative point 1. I can also do negative 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and 10, and negative 10. So for example, if I have 0.1 as my tick mark, what do you think this tick mark will be? That will be a tenth of the way in between 0 and 0.1. A tenth of 0.1, that would make it what? Good. Point 0, 0.01. Very nice. So. This will be 0 0.01, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 10 would make it 0.1. Does everybody understand? All right, so what if I had 0 0.01? Tell me what this tick mark will be. See if you can uh, write it down on your paper. What will this tick mark be? Right here. So if this is 0 0.01, this is 0 0.02 here. 
So this would be 0 0.015. Good. All right. If this was 10, then this is 20, negative 20, and so on. So we can keep plotting like that uh, if you know what the scale is. All right, so if you have, say, negative 3, you can think of negative 3 as a debt. You owe something. And the debt of 3 is shown by plotting it to the left of 0, 3 units. Depending on the scale, we'll decide where negative 3 happens to be. All right, so that means we can plot our decimal and rational numbers on number line now. So if I say that the increment is 1 over 10,000, and I end up with this tick mark to be negative 2.135, then 10,000 later, which is right there, will be negative 2.134. Why is that? Because this is tenth, hundreds, thousands. So if this is thousands, then the next uh, little tick mark is going to be ten thousandths. And so if you have tick marks and you're plotting negative numbers, so look what happens. So this is negative 2.134. This will be negative 2. Point what? 1342, 43, 44, 45, 46, right? 47, 48, 49. And that will become the 5. So when it's negative number, remember the order switches because we're going to the left instead of to the right. If you took these two tick marks, so that would be negative 2.1358 and negative 2.1357. I can't show 10 tick marks in here, so I'm going to expand that or zoom in. If you have graphing calculators or uh, graphing software, you can zoom in on a uh, smaller scale. And so if I divide this segment here into 10 equal parts, which is what I've done here, then this tick mark will be negative 2.13576. So look, the 7 is this, and the 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you're not sure what's happening, just look again. So this tick mark here, so this is negative 2.135. This would be 51, 52, 53, 54, 56, 57, 58. All right, so once you have that, you can expand that and have 10 more tick marks and then plot numbers and figure it out that way. All right. So if I plot numbers and I have fractional increments, like say a thirteenth, then if I label one of my tick marks as negative 10 thirteenths, then I'll have negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 11, 12. So you can see the numerator behaves just like integers then. The only difference is that the bottom tick mark, the denominator, you have a denominator that you have to carry with you. So really, plotting fractions, positive or negative, is nothing different than plotting integers as long as you understand what the denominator stands for. So that's an important connection that you want to make with plotting integers versus plotting rational numbers. All right, so uh, let's take a look at uh, this number line here. So I have 0 is here. How do I know? what fraction represents each of the tick marks. You have to look at how many divisions there are between the two dark tick marks. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means each tick mark is a fourth. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, or 1. 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 8 fourths. So what do you think this tick mark will be here? So 9 fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths. That would, that's what this tick mark will be. So each tick mark here is um, a quarter of a unit. All right, how about this one? So now I'm making my increment of a sixth. All right, so increment of a sixth. So if you look over here, from here to here, so I have 24 sixths is 4. So this would be 4 and 1 sixth, 4 and 2 sixths, 4 and 3 sixths. Now, you can see this tick mark is also halfway between those two, so that's also four and a half. Or you can think of how one, two, three, 
This is 3, 1, 2, 3. So 3 increments of 1 sixth make half. 2 increment of 1 third will make what? So look, 1, 2, 3. So that makes a third. So 2 increments of 1 sixth makes a third because you can see that you have three equal pieces. So 2 is 1. Here's another 2, that's 2. Here's another 2, that's 3. So depending on how many groups of the increments you're taking, you can, on this number line, be able to plot sixths, halves, thirds. So basically, if you look at denominators of different size, as long as you have a common denominator, you can plot all three or four or how many fractions you have on the same number line. All right, so now that we know how to plot real numbers on a number line, many of you have asked us, well, what about complex numbers? We introduced complex numbers, so I think it is important that we tell you quickly how to plot it. It's not very important for this particular class that you know how to plot complex numbers, but it's not that hard either. It uses number lines. But now, because we have a real part and an imaginary part, we need two number lines to graph that. The convention is that the horizontal axis is the real axis. The vertical axis represents the imaginary axis. You can think of complex numbers as points in the complex plane, or you can also plot them as vectors. A vector is something that has a magnitude and a direction. And the direction always goes from 0, 0 to the coordinates of that point right there. So if I have the number, say, negative 5 plus 3i, the 3 represents imaginary part. The negative 5 represents the real part. So negative 5 on the horizontal number line, because that's my real axis. So negative 5, and then 3 on the imaginary axis, which is my vertical axis, so 3 up. So negative 5 to the left and 3 up. So that point there is your complex point. Or you can also think of this vector as a complex vector. So there are two ways to plot it. So what do you think the, if I change this, let's say, to like a 7? So now I'm going at 7. Let's change the 3 uh, to a negative 3. So 7, negative 3 will be down there. So that's how you plot complex numbers.